Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Eric, and in today's episode, we're finally going to start coding our first C++ programming project for the series. Now, in the last tutorial, I explained that we're going to be using a finite state machine to create our simulated console application-based vending machine. To keep things simple, like I said in the last episode, we're going to keep it to just four states. And those four states are going to be the select state, the quantity state, the calculate state, and the update state. Now, here's a program that I created for project one a little bit earlier to test whether or not it works. So here's a demo. So the program that we're going to be making will first display all of the statuses for the vending machine as well as the user's amount of money on hand. So as you can see, the current status for the item called 100 has 10 inside the machine and it costs a thousand points each. And then for 200 it has 10 also, but it costs 2000 points each. And then the third item is 3000 points each. And then the person who is me, Eric, has a total of 100,000 points on hand. And then on the bottom is where the program actually starts. Now, as you can see, it says first, please select a drink from the following available options. So this is in, right now it's in the select state and then it would display all three drinks, which is inside the vending machine. And then each of them has an ID corresponding to it, because as you know, from real life vending machines, some vending machines have numbers or like alphanumeric code that correspond to the item that you want to buy. And in this case, we're just keeping it as three digit numbers. So let's say we want to purchase a Coke. So we would type in 100. And as you can see, our program shows you have selected Coke. How many would you like? So this is inside the quantity state right now. So let's say we would want to buy all of it. So that's 10. And then it says, okay, your order has been received. You place an order for 10 sodas. This is just to let us know that it has indeed received the amount that we requested. And then it calculates the cost inside the calculate state. And it figured out that 10 sodas at a thousand points each equals 10,000 points total. So in this case, we could type in like an amount we want to pay. So let's say I want to use all my points. So 100,000. Enter. And as you can see, it shows, thank you, your change is 90,000 points. And then the inventory updates, and it prints out the status for the inventory, as well as the status of how much money I have left in my wallet. And then it starts the program all over again, except this time it remembers that item 100 has zero left. Item 200 has 10, 300 has 10. So let's say we want to purchase Coke again. So type in 100, and then let's say we want to buy one. Well, we know that there's no more left, but we're gonna type one anyways. And as you can see, it shows that your order has been received. However, there's not enough in stock and it prints the status over again. So let's say we want to buy Pepsi. So 200 and then how many would you like? Let's say all of it. And then in that case, let's say we paid the machine 10,000 points, which is not enough to purchase all 10. So enter. And as you can see, it'll show you don't have enough money and then it would go back to the select state. So let's say we want to buy seven up. So 300. And then we would like something ridiculous, like 100, okay? And as you can see, it says there's not enough in stock, which is perfect. So another test we're going to do is, let's say we want to buy Pepsi. So we type in 200, and let's say we would like all of it, so that's 10. And then let's say for the payment, we type in a negative number of negative 90,000, for example. What do you think will happen? Well, I coded the program for this part, so as you can see, it'll show you don't have enough money. We're gonna figure out how to do that later in the tutorial where I structure the if else condition to check whether or not it's negative and all that stuff. Okay, so how we're going to approach creating this program is I'm gonna split the video into four parts. So the first part, which is this part of the video, we will focus on creating the entire structure for the four states. And then we're gonna work on the setup of all the variables and the data types and all that stuff, as well as the select case for our first state for the finite state machine. Okay, so inside our main file, you would set it up as usual, but this time make sure you include the string library because we're going to be using some string variables for certain parts of the program. Now to make our program a little bit more neat and cleaner to look at, we're going to take advantage of the enumerations as well as structures for organizing our data. So first off, let's create an enum of vending machine state. Now this enumeration will store all of the finite state machines for states that we mentioned. So there's the select, quantity, calculate, and update. So those are the four states for our finite state machine vending machine. And next, let's create another enumeration to represent the brands of our sodas. So there's going to be Coke, Pepsi, and 7up. 
Of course, you can always extend this to a longer list for more items in your vending machine. Now, as we've learned from the enumerations video that we can assign values to each of the enumeration values inside. So let's do 100, 200, and then 300. Now you don't have to give these numbers sequentially, you could mix them up uh, whatever you like. Now with that set up, we're going to next create a structure to to store all of our student information. So in this case, we're going to just keep it simple and use string name to store the student's name as well as the points that he or she has. For now, we're just going to use an integer so it's going to be easier to manage instead of having to deal with decimals. But of course, if you want decimal values, you could just change the int to a float and then make sure you do that to the other stuff we're going to create in the main function. Next, what you want to do is create a structure for a soda. And then inside soda, we're going to have brand brand name. And then we're going to have another data member, which is inventory. And then finally, the price for each soda. Hmm, how come this has a red line? Okay, so inside our main function, we're going to create a variable for the vending machine state data type, which will be called current state. Now, the reason why we're going to create a vending machine state variable that represents the current state is so that our program can keep track of what state the program is currently in and by doing so we could use that information to navigate around the different states if we didn't do that then we would always be stuck in the same state not only that by using current state and assigning it to select right off the bat we get to start at the select state because this is our starting point as mentioned in the previous video so let's comment our code just to make things easier to read so initial vending machine state is select and then update upon state change so if we want to switch the states we're gonna have to overwrite this value later on so we're gonna have to do like current state equals and then quantity or calculate or update or back to select but for now we're gonna keep it select because that's the starting point next we're gonna fill up our vending machine with sodas so to do that, we're going to create a soda array called vending machine, and it's going to have three items in it. So inside the brackets, we're going to put three. And then to fill up the vending machine array with some sodas, we're going to first do this vending machine and then access the zero if position dot brand name because we're using a structure as you can see here we're going to access all three of those data members inside of the soda structure so vending machine zero dot brand name equals Coke and then vending machine zero dot inventory equals let's say 10 cokes and then vending machine zero dot price let's set the price to 1000 points and now let's do the second soda so that's vending machine one dot brand name equals to pepsi vending machine one dot inventory equals to 10 and then vending machine one dot price equals to 2000 points let's add some comments here just to make things organized so load up with coke load up with pepsi and then load up with seven up and then vending machine two dot brand name equals to seven up vending machine two dot inventory equals 10 and vending machine two dot price equals to three thousand points so you could change the values to whatever you like as long as it fits the data type okay so now that we've created all of those variables let's move on to the next part and that is we're gonna have to create a few more variables and those few variables are first off we're gonna have to create a soda variable to keep track of what the selected soda is from our user and our user is going to be a student data type we're gonna give it the name of Eric. So Eric.name equals Eric. And then Eric.points equals 100,000 points. So 100,000 points wallet. Okay, now that we've got that down, we can start creating our state diagram. I mean the finite state machine for our vending machine. So to do that, we're gonna need to use the switch statement. 
and inside the switch statement, we want to put the current state inside the parentheses. And by doing so, we could use the case to keep track of the state that it's on right now. So create four cases that correspond to each of the vending machine states that I've listed above right here. So case select, break case quantity, break case calculate, break case update break and then let's add a default case and then inside the default we'll just see out invalid or let's just say error error invalid state detected awesome okay so because the program is going to be very big we're going to work on each of these cases for each part of the video. So in today's video, we're just gonna focus on filling out the information that's going to go into the select case. So in that case, we're gonna first see out, well, before we do that, let's plan things out a bit, okay? So first off, we want to display the current status for the vending machine and the student's wallet. And then two, display the soda names and corresponding ID values. And then we want to do three, ask the user what drink they want. And then four, if valid drink selected, move to quantity state. State. Else, go back to select state. So that's how we're going to tackle this case right here. So first off, in order to display the information for the vending machine and our student's wallet, we're going to have to do several lines of Couts and we're going to use the powerful feature of a for loop. So first off, let's do Cout. Let's make things nice. So current status, three, one, two, three, four, five, and then end line, Cout. This is going to be the vending machine. That line. And then we're going to use a for loop. To zero, i less than. There's going to be three items, i plus plus. Now you can make the i less than and then the number be the size of. So it's dynamic, but for this case, since we're just dealing with three items, we're just going to hard code the value inside it. Now using this for loop, we're going to loop through this chunk of code and display all the information for each soda inside the vending machine. So to do that, let's see out vending machine i dot brand name has vending machine i dot inventory drinks and each cost costs and then vending machine i dot price and then points And then end line. Yep. So that's how we're going to display the information for each of the sodas inside the vending machine. So what we did here is using the for loop, we're going to loop through the array that is the size of three, which has three elements. That's Coke, Pepsi, and 7up. And then using the Cout, we're going to display the name of the soda. And it has the number of sodas inside the vending machine and each cost is and then the price. Okay, so let's see. The next thing to do is let's see out the student's information. So student one, two, three, end line. And then see out Eric.name has Eric.points points total. End line. And then 
Let's do uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, and status. And then we'll do a double end line here so it has more space, makes it easier to read. Okay, so if we were to run this program, let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so apparently there are some build errors. Let's see what's going on. It's probably due to that string. Oh, I know. I forgot to use using namespace std. Using namespace std. There. Okay, so if we were to compile and run this program, it should work this time. So as you can see, our program ran the select state and it shows the current status of the vending machine and the students. So it shows the first drink has 10 of them and it costs 1,000 points each, two, and then three, and then the amount of points I have in my wallet. Okay, awesome. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is to display the soda names and the corresponding ID values. That way we can ask the user for their input. Otherwise they won't know what to input to get the drink they want. So to do that, we're gonna have to do some C out work. So actually we're gonna have to add this part to here and then swap this down here. Yeah. And then four would be user inputs the drink and then five would be the one we have right here. Okay, so on the second step, we have to C out, please select a drink from the following available options and line. And then next, on the third step, we're going to have to display the soda names. So, C out. In this case, we're going to use Coke equals 100 and then backslash N, which is another way of representing a new line, except you you could just keep, keep it inside the string. And then 200 backslash N and then 7 up. And then we're not going to use a backslash N the very last item because we're going to rely on end line just to make it nice. Okay, so once that is done, let's ask the user. But before we can ask the user for the input, we have to create the variable that will store the user's input. So because they're gonna type in 100, 200, or 300, we're gonna have to create a integer variable. So int selected drink. And then let's see in selected drink. So this will allow the user to type in their response for the numbers that correspond to the soda that they want. And then they store it in there. And then the next thing we do is we use a switch statement. Yep, another switch statement inside our existing switch statement. And then inside the parentheses of this switch statement, we would put selected drink. And then based on what selected drink was selected by the user, we'll determine what the program does next. So in each case, we're gonna list out our sodas. So Pepsi, break, and then case seven up, and then break. And then let's add a default. So the default will handle the ID values. Like let's say the user did not put 100, 200, or 300. Let's say they did a typo or purposefully tried a different value. Then the default statement will capture that scenario and see out invalid drink selected. That way our program will not break when it runs. Okay, so inside the Coke case, we're gonna see out and tell the user you have selected Coke. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other two drinks. So right here and right here. And then don't forget to change the values. So this one to Pepsi and the bottom one to 7up. Awesome. Now back to the Coke case, we'll do selected soda dot brand name equals Coke. And then we'll update the current state equals quantity. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this is first see out so we can tell the user that a Coke is indeed selected. And then we update the selected soda variable that keeps track of the soda that's being selected by our user with the name of the soda that they want. And then in order to change states from select state to quantity state, we have to update the current state value with the value of quantity. Otherwise, if we were to finish this part of the switch statement and then it, is, it reaches the break statement right here, which marks the end of the select case, 
we're just going to end up going back to the beginning and then starting the select case all over again, which is not what we want. So we're going to have to do the same for the Pepsi and the 7up, except the only difference is the name. Okay, so update the brand name to Pepsi and 7up correspondingly. 7up. Okay, awesome. So if we were to run this program right now, let's see what would happen. So as you can see, it's starting to get a lot more closer and closer to the example program that I ran earlier. So it shows the current status as shown from the first run. And then right here it shows, please select a drink from the following available options. So if we were to type in, let's say 100 right now, it'll show you have selected Coke. And then in the background, it'll update the status to the quantity. But then nothing happens any further because we didn't code the quantity, calculate and update states yet. So yeah so if we were to rerun this program and try the other drink so pepsi this time as you can see it shows you have selected pepsi and then let's try seven up this time so that would be 300 and as you can see it shows you have selected seven up perfect so that concludes this part of the tutorial so in the next part we're going to work on creating the code for making the quantity case to work out and one more thing i wanted to add on the default case is just in case, we'll use the current state equals to select. Never know, things could go wrong down the line. So just in case, add that in.